Blog Talk Radio. to only one, and that is the true and living Elohim, the Holy One of Israel. And who is the Holy One of Israel? He is none other than the name that he goes by, Yahweh. Yahweh is the creator of the heavens, the earth, the sea, and all that in them is. Yahweh made everything that we see and even the things that we don't see. All of these are his possessions. As he told us in the book of Job, the 41st chapter, 11th verse, whatsoever is under the whole heaven is mine. These are the words of the true and living Elohim. You notice I said the true The opposite of that is false. The living Elohim, that means he never died because he lives forever. This is who we're speaking of today. Praise the mighty Yah. You're going to be blessed to listen to this broadcast today. We have a power-packed broadcast that we don't want you to miss. But Before we go into our subject, before we have this broadcast to be brought forth, we want a beautiful song to be prayed, and that's what we're going to do, and it's called... You can run, but you cannot hide. Set your arms to do good. Keep your tongue from lying. Cause your eyes are in every place. Cause your eyes are in every place. You can run, you can run, but you cannot hide. Set your arms to do good. Keep your tongue from lying. Cause your eyes are in every place. Cause your eyes are in every place. Yahweh's eyes run to and fro throughout the whole world. There is nothing unseen from the King of Kings. He who made all things, let us glorify His glorious and fearful name. By acknowledging this Sabbath day with joyfulness, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fearing Yahweh and keeping His commandments is all that matters. And I know that whatsoever Elohim do with it shall be forever. The entire earth shall tremble with terror by His presence. He that made the eyes shall He not see. He that made the ear. Shall he not hear? Yahweh's judgment is near. He will plead with us face to face. I trust in your infinite wisdom. Yahweh show us grace because we love you. There is no Elohim beside you. You know not in it. The models that my people put they trust in ain't worth a penny. But you, Yahweh, are the king. You, Yahweh, are the judge. You, Yahweh, are the lawgiver. You, Yahweh, will save us. You can run, you can run, but you cannot hide. Set your heart to do good. Keep your tongue from lying. Cause your eyes are in every place. Cause your eyes are in every place. You can run, you can run, but you cannot hide. Set your heart to do good. Keep your tongue from lying. Cause your eyes are in every place. Cause your eyes 
In the judgment, whether it's good or evil, and who born you from the womb, who then will you make equal unto Yah? The idols are silver and cold. My people walking in darkness from all the lies that were told. Staying true to the scriptures, it ain't no need to do wrong. Giving glory to Yah, cause he made it all on his own. And with his right on me, divided the ways of the sea. Trust in Yah and be established. Fear him and then cleave unto his laws and be strong. Yeah, one thing that I know is if a man don't stand for something. Then, then he gon' fall in the hole There's only one way to go Elohim is my hope My folks afflicted Addicted zoned out And strong on that dope Called idolatry Christianity All the myths Choose the good And be blessed But we chose wickedness Lest we be cursed Cause we refuse To follow Yah's rules Beware cause Yah's eyes Are watching your every move You can run You can run But you cannot hide Set your heart to do good Keep your tongue from lying Cause Yah's eyes Ordinary place, cause y'all lies. Ordinary place, you can run, you can run, but you cannot hide. Set your heart to do good, keep your tongue from lying, cause y'all lies. Ordinary place, cause y'all lies. Ordinary place. No, that's right. Hallelujah. Praise the mighty Yahweh. Today, my people, we're going to be speaking of the mighty Yahweh. Lots of people really don't know the Creator. And when you say Creator, you're going to have to identify and qualify what that means. Because a lot of people believe that there are a lot of creators. A lot of people believe that no God could have made the heavens, the earth, the sea, uh, anything in the world. That it was just this great big bang theory. And kaboom, everything began to exist. These are some of the sentiments of the heathen that the creator himself made because they don't know him. They don't understand his greatness and his magnificence. They don't understand his powers and his might. And it's incumbent upon us to talk about this because the whole world is going to have to bow to Yahweh. The whole earth are going to worship the creator. And my goodness, I want me and my people to be in that day. In that day where all flesh will come to worship our creator. The one that we have rejected. The one that we didn't even know was our Elohim. The one who made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in it. And every aspect of his creation was made for his purpose. Now, we're going to go deep into this. We're going to go deep into his purposes. The reason why he made certain things that a lot of people don't understand. For instance, a lot of people believe that even the lights in the heavens that he made was really the sun is the light of the moon. And that the moon gets its light from the sun. I know, in case you haven't heard that, you all you have to do is listen to some of these philosophers in school and in the colleges. And they even went so far, these are the same people who believe that the earth was flat and that at a certain point of walking the earth, you may fall over a cliff. Do you all understand? They, they believe the earth wasn't round till they looked at the words of the creator who made the earth. These are the same heathens that believe that the earth 
moves at all times, and it rotates on its axis. So I know you've heard this before, but guess what? These are nothing but mere lies and deceit on the true and living Elohim. Because the world don't know the Most High. And not only do the world don't even know the Most High, our people don't even know their Creator. Yes, and must I say, Yahweh lets us know this in His Word that we certainly have not really ever understood Him as a nation of people, because we're His people. For instance, Let's first and foremost go to the book of Jeremiah, the fourth chapter. I highly recommend that you get some scriptures today in order for you to follow with us as we talk about the mighty Yahweh. This is very important for our life that we understand the greatness of the Most High in the, His majesty and His kingship and His royalty and His rulership and His authority and his magnificence that many people are not aware of. And in Jeremiah, the fourth chapter, this is what the Almighty said concerning himself and his people. Very important. And that's why I can understand the creed of being so hard on us about knowledge. And I'm telling you, just studying the words of the Most High is one of the greatest things you could do in your whole life, my people. And I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you what I mean by that. And I'm going to show you all various things the Creator said concerning this. But this is what he told us in the Jeremiah, the fourth chapter, the 22nd verse. He said, for my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children, and that they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. My goodness. Must I say, my people, there's various reasons why we are in the conditions we're in today. First of all, we just didn't trust the Creator enough to obey His laws. We felt that the water was going to be colder and the grass was going to be greener by listening to other nations and other people's philosophies and ideologies. So we didn't trust in the Almighty, and therefore the Creator, He gave us to these same people, these lovers that we trusted in the nations. He allowed us to see just how much they cared about us. And I think we can see now. I believe if we got eyes and can see, ears and can hear, or any perceptibility that we have, I believe we can clearly see now that the heathen, the nations, haven't cared anything about us. But nevertheless, we should be concerned about ourselves. It's going to be hard for us to help other people, and we haven't even helped ourselves. Because we are people that care more about other folks than we care about our own self. That's a shame. Yahweh gave us laws that said, love thy neighbor as thy love thyself. So therefore, we haven't known the Creator because the Creator is commanding us to love ourselves. But if you don't love yourself, you don't believe or you won't trust in things that pertain to you because you don't trust yourself. You don't love yourself. You don't love your heritage. You don't love, sometimes our people act like they don't even love their skin color. It's sad. But what we don't realize is that all these things is what makes us a people and a nation. And Yahweh told us the first thing in this verse, he said, for my people is foolish. My people is foolish. They have not known 
me. Well, it's time that we try to get to know the Creator. Now, the way that He gave us to know Him is something that He told us that we better pay close attention to. And I must I say, I'm going to show you what He accused us of in the book of Hosea, and it's the truth. Hosea. Let's go to Hosea, the fourth chapter, and I'm sure almost everybody that is familiar with, as man called the Bible, is familiar with the scripture I'm about to read, or at least they've heard it. And it's in Hosea 4, starting at the sixth verse. And the reason why it's important for us to talk about the mighty Yahweh is because he is the essence of our life. He is the essence of our life. And we're going to go over those things. We're going to show these great things so that we can understand who do you think we're preparing to meet? Who's going to come and visit us in America? That's right. His arrival will soon be here. The creator himself. He told us he was going to visit us in our captivity. And it's important for us to know what he has already said he's going to do. It's very important. And this is what I mean. Let's, as I mentioned, let's go to Hosea 4 and let's read the sixth verse. This is what it says. It says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy Elohim, I will also forget thy children. As they were increased, so they sinned against me, therefore will I change their glory into shame. Mm, 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 mm. Man. And he sure enough have done it. He have put us to big shame because we didn't trust him, because we don't know him. And one of the greatest things that we could do is to reject knowledge. He said, my people are destroyed for the lack of it. So in other words, anyone of our people that claim they know who they are. And even if they don't, they need to know this. That Yahweh wants us to be knowledgeable, first and foremost, about him. We're so busy wanting to beat our children about making the best grades in school. Yeah, that's, that, that's right. I said that. But we don't realize what we need to whoop our children for, first and foremost, is when they and yourself don't have the knowledge of our true and living Elohim. Oh, we got our priorities in the wrong order. We believe that if your children ain't making an A in school, that this is really terrible. What well, must I say? You should be more concerned if they're making an A in the knowledge of the mighty Yahweh. Because in the beginning, middle, and end, he is the only one that matters forever. And the Almighty, when he's talking about knowledge, that's the knowledge he's speaking of. And you, how, you, how do you know this? Let's break it down. Let's look at his law concerning what he just said. He says, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy Elohim, I will also forget thy children. Well, let's see if we, that say that we know the Almighty, are we doing these laws? Let's go to Deuteronomy 6 for a minute. Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter. And let's see what the true and living Elohim has to say concerning what we're supposed to be doing. In Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, 
starting at the fourth verse. This is what the Creator told us. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh, I Elohim, is one Yahweh. So in other words, that means Shema Israel, Yah Elohinu, Yahweh Eka, which means hear, O Israel, Yahweh, I Elohim, is one Yahweh. First of all, that's one of the first things he told us to engrave in our minds, in our souls, that he's one Elohim, not two or three. And most of our people believe that he's a threesome, the Father, the Son, and the Ghost. And look what he says furthermore. He said, and thou shalt love Yahweh thy Elohim with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength or might. That's what it says. And look what else he says. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. That means what's between our eyes? Our brains. Not like the Jewish man. The Jewish man wears this little box in the middle of his forehead. Yeah, he take this little box around his forehead and he said, and they think that he's saying to put the laws right there, literally, between on your forehead, looking like somebody crazy. Yahweh was speaking of what's between your eyes and that's our brains. You don't have to put a box on that. He won't, that you got to internally receive knowledge to feed the brain. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. So you literally were to write this. This is literal. This is literal. We were to write this on the post of our houses and our gates. And it, I must not tell you all, because I don't know if some of you all have ever had this law explained, or that you heard this before, or read it. See, in the 8th verse, he said, Thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontless between thine eyes. In other words, when he say as, or like frontless, that means he was speaking of your brains. He wasn't talking about literally putting these laws on your forehead. He's talking about they need to be in your head, which is between your eyes, which is the brain. And thou shall write them, literally now, upon the post of your house and on thy gate. So in other words, what we were to do, even to this day, we are to write his laws on the inner post of our homes. That means in all of your openings of your doors, we're supposed to have the laws written in our doorposts. So what I've done and other people have done, they call it, it's called a zikron. And you write the laws, type the laws, you can make them uh, small, or you can put it in a type of a box, and you literally put it within your doorposts. Of all your openings, whether you got a garage or a door, these things were to always be there. That's how serious the Creator was that our homes were to be righteous. He said we were to have these words, and that majorly means His Ten Commandments, and even these words that you're reading in this chapter, because the Almighty wanted us literally to write his laws on our posts and on our gates. So if you got gates, my people, you are to put these things on your gates. Hallelujah. 
The mighty Yahweh means what he says and says what he means. So it's important for us to realize just how holy the most have wanted our homes to be set apart from all other houses. Praise the mighty Yah. And he told us that we were to teach these laws to our children when what? Look what he said. He said, first of all, in the seventh verse, thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in your house, when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when we rise up. That means when we get up out of our beds, we were to talk of these laws to our families. And believe you me, when your family hears the same laws over and over and over again, let me tell you, my people, it's going to make a difference. Even our children that might be rebellious. That's why the heathen know that he could hookwink us by having us to worship his God. Because 24-7, you can cut the television on, the radio on, and turn it to one of the channels. And automatically, you're going to see some lying preacher on the screen constantly speaking the lies and deceits that our people have been hearing ever since we got off the plantation. Oh, excuse me, must I say off the chattel slavery plantations, because we're still slaves. But nevertheless, he knows that repetition is very important. And Yahweh said that we were to daily to do this, daily teach him. And that's how we would have known Yahweh and how mighty he is. For instance, let's go further. Let's go to the book of Psalms, the first chapter, and see what thus said Yahweh concerning this matter. Psalms 1. Psalms 1, we're going to start reading at the first verse. This is what it says. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the wicked, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, what is the scornful? The scornful is people that mock the law, that speak against the law, that laugh at you when you go get ready to go to Sabbath class because they're not serious and they don't want to get to know the Almighty. Well, the Almighty said, don't sit in the seat of the scornful. And many of our people who claim they know Yahweh, they claim their best friends is people who reject the laws of Yahweh. My people, we're going to have to learn how to do a U-Haul on, on our life and the people that we claim is our friend. He said, but his delight is in the law of Yahweh. And in his law does he meditate when? Day and night. And of course, I have to say it. If we were meditating in the laws at these two times, then must I say we wouldn't have a difference or confusion about when do a day begin, when do a night begin. These are two different times. And the reason why he's telling us that we would delight in his law day and night is because that's what we want to study and read and meditate and pray on is his words. And we would know the difference between day and night and can see right here that these are two different times, two different seasons. Oh, my goodness. So, in other words, it's a blessing for us to be in his law Day and night. He said, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. That's why a lot of us aren't prospering. 
because we're not following these the guidelines to show the mighty Yahweh that we're walking with him. See, we need to walk with him like Enoch walked with him. Like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our ancestors, our fathers walked with Yahweh. Like all the righteous prophets, they walk with Yahweh. The wicked are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the wicked shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For Yahweh knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall perish. Hallelujah. That's the truth. See, while you trust in, in people who don't regard his laws, don't you know you're going to be right there with them when they get blowed away, when the worm is eating their bodies and the fire burning it, according to Isaiah, the 66th chapter? Furthermore, look what Yahweh told us in Deuteronomy chapter 30. you got to see this. Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter. Here's what the true and living Elohim had to say concerning our life. He told us, and we're going to go over various things to show you just how mighty the mighty Elohim Yahweh is. Deuteronomy 30. Look what Yah told us in the 10th verse. If thou shalt hearken, if it's conditional, if. Thou shalt hearken unto the voice of Yahweh thy Elohim to keep his commandments and his statutes which are written in this book of the law. And if thou turn unto Yahweh thy Elohim with all thy heart and with all thy soul for this commandment which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee Neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, Who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it? Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, Who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very near unto thee. It is in your mouth and in your heart that thou mayest do it. So therefore, on judgment day, when Yahweh get ready to judge us, we couldn't say, oh, I don't understand. My great, 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 great grandmama, they didn't never hear this. My great, 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 great grandfather, they didn't never hear this truth. How do you know they didn't hear it? Well, you know what? You ain't got to worry about that now. Because you're hearing the words of your true and living Elohim. And Yahweh said, concerning all his people, that include our ancestors too, that you think didn't have any wisdom inside their bones to never know this. Well, Yahweh is letting you know that's not true. He said, the word, the word that I'm talking to you about now. He said, it is very near to you. You ain't got to go to heaven. You ain't got to say, well, I wonder why it wasn't no mores back in the day. Yes, it was. I wonder why it wasn't somebody to tell the people about Yahweh. Well, evidently it had to be. Because this is what the creator trying to tell you, my people. He's saying that this word, is so near to you that you don't have to go worry about going to heaven or somebody preparing a place for you like you read in the New Testament. That's what Christ, he said, I'm prepare a place for you in heaven. You understand? An excuse for you not to do what's right. An excuse for you to say, I don't have to keep the law now because Christ, Yahshua, he died for me, and he 
has prepared a place for me in heaven. I don't have to worry about the law. I just got to believe in that and in him. But you're going to be mighty disappointed because Yahweh is confounding you right now in this book. He said the word is it's, it's very near to you. He said it's in your mouth and it's in your heart that thou mayest do it. Do you understand? So in other words, it's there. Now, Yahweh, gonna when he give us the new covenant, he said he's going to write it on our hearts as he wrote it on two tables of stone for it to be taught to his people by his servants, the prophets. And that's you, why you can see why Yahweh is really going to be hard on all your ministers, all your bishops, all your so-called cohangs and pastors and leaders and mores and teachers and rabbis and rabies, all of them and all leadership is going to be judged by the mighty Yahweh. Did they tell you this truth? Did they teach you his law? And it is your job to inquire, to seek to find the word of the Almighty. And Yahweh said, this word is already there. That's why the new covenant, you won't have to worry about teaching because he's going to write it in our hearts and in all our inward parts, in your kidneys, in your spleen, in your emotions, in your brain. So all them thoughts about not doing it will be erased because his writings will be in our inward body. And he said, they shall no more teach every man his neighbor, nor every man his brother to say, no Yahweh. Just read Jeremiah, the 31st chapter, and read about this great covenant called the new covenant, which many of our people believe they're under the new covenant right now, that the new Testament is the new covenant. Well, Yahweh is calling you a liar right now. And for any minister that believes that, that might be listening to this broadcast, we want you to call us. All you got to do is dial area code 323-443-7418. Hit the number one. We're going to put you, we're going to move you right on up. You, you're going to talk first. We're going to give you a chance to set me straight. But in the meantime, look what Yahweh is saying to us. We can do this law. It's already there. All you need is to study. All you need is to read. All you need is to seek him. This is, this is his instructions of today. So therefore, when you're seeking him, you're seeking his laws. You're seeking his words. Hallelujah. So we're going to, anytime we're going to talk about seeking Yahweh, it got to pertain to his laws because everything else is vanity. Therefore, let's go to the book of Isaiah, the 34th chapter. Let's see what thus said Yahweh in Isaiah, the 34th chapter. And let me verify that statement that I just made. If we're going to seek him, we better be seeking this. Isaiah, the 34th chapter, the 16th verse. This is what it reads. It says, Seek ye out of the book of Yahweh and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it has commanded, and his spirit, it has gathered them. Hallelujah. Hey, what book is he talking about? The book we're reading right now. From Genesis to Malachi. And we better understand why we came here in the first place. We can't never lose focus on what the mighty Yahweh did to us, y'all. 
we did it to ourselves. Why? Because let's hear the conclusion. And But before we hear the conclusion, let us hear Psalms 81. Let's go to Psalms 81. Let me show you. Psalms 81. Because as he said in Isaiah 28 chapter, if you want to learn the words of the Almighty, he said his word is line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. So he comes in the volume of the book from Genesis to Malachi. But let's see what the Almighty has to say in Psalms 81 when he pleads to us about his laws and his ways. And it's, it's a, man, it's, it's one of the most gripping words I've ever heard in my life. And you can hear how Yahweh is appealing to us. Look what he said in, in the 8th verse of Psalms 81. Check this out. Hear, O my people, and I will testify unto thee. O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me, there shall no strange Elohim, no strange God be with thee. Neither shall thou worship any foreign Elohim. Yahshua is a foreign Elohim to us. I don't care if they do put a Hebrew name on him. That don't make no difference. He's foreign because beside Yahweh, there is none else. How much is it going to take for us to understand that? He made it so crystal clear when he gave us a law that says, in Exodus 23, verse 13, he said, In all things that I have said unto you, be circumspect and make no mention of the names of other gods. Neither let them be heard out of your mouth. My goodness, we couldn't even speak the names. Of another deity. Let's long call on him. So Yahweh is jealous. And Yahweh sits. On. His throne. Alone. As king. Forever. Yahweh said he lift his hand to heaven and say. I live. Forever. That's some of the. That's some of those great. Attributes of his words that you, you need to see and you need to get them in your bones, my people. Look what he said in the 10th verse of Psalms 81. I am Yahweh thy Elohim, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide and I'm going to fill it. But my people would not hearken to my voice and Israel would none of me. That means we didn't want none of the most high. So I gave them up unto their own heart's lust, and they walked in their own counsels. Oh, can you hear that? He said, oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. Oh, my goodness. You can feel that, can't you? He said, oh, my goodness. If my people would have hearkened and listened and obeyed me. And Israel had walked in my laws and my ways. He said, I should have been subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. The haters of Yahweh should have submitted themselves unto him. But their time should have endured forever. Y'all, many of our brothers and sisters that have perished by the hands of the same people who brought us here on slave ships, the Ku Klux Klan, the police, and every other murderer that have murdered and touched Yah's anointed. Yahweh said, if we had kept his laws, he said, I would have subdued these heathens. And Yahweh wants to fight for us. But how hard are we fighting 
to do what he wants us to do? How hard are we fighting? He said the haters of Yahweh should have submitted themselves. See, don't you know, my people, according to Psalms 83, the psalmist knew. He knew. He said, keep not thy silence, O Elohim, and hold not your peace. Be not still, O Elohim, for lo, your enemies, thine enemies, make a tumult. They make a commotion. They screaming and roaring behind closed doors, cheering about you serving their God. Like the Philistines was cheering when they seen Samson pulling that yoke for them, for sport, laughing at your ancestor and my ancestor. And he had plucked his eyes out because he got weak. And some of the brothers don't even want to wear no hair on their head. Don't even want to wear locks like we naturally have, even through all the scriptures. We had afros and, and locks. But the scriptures mainly speak about locks. And Samson had seven of them. And within him, keeping his hair, his locks, because of his Nazarite vow that he made, or that his parents made for him, he was never to shave his locks. But he allowed a foreign woman who worshipped a foreign god to tease him, to taunt him, to scorn him, so that he gave in and he lost his strength. And that's us today. We've lost our strength. We've lost the strength of the mighty Yahweh. And the only way we're going to get it back is now we're going to have to start regrowing our hair and locks. And I'm not only talking about your hair and your locks. I'm talking about regrowing our strength in wanting to do his commands. He said, for lo, your enemies have made a turmoil, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. He said, they have taken crafty counsel against thy people. They've taken slick counsel. They, behind closed doors, are laughing at us like I don't know what. Oh, yes. He said, and consulted against thine hidden one. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel shall be no more in remembrance. And they were successful. They were successful. And then what makes it so terrible about it? Even the, the nation that Yahweh said he has indignation for forever. That means a perpetual hatred that Yah got for a nation. This is the first person on the list that made sure we lost our name. And they call themselves, we're going to take ours. And this is what I mean, the first one on the list. He said, fifth verse of Psalms 83. So they have consulted together with one consent. They com are confederate against thee. And the first name on the list is the tabernacles of who? Edom. The Edomites. The so-called Jewish man. Do you understand? Or the Israelis. Because they definitely wouldn't dare call themselves Israelites. Do you understand? They know better than that. Because they know they're not the people. Now, all you got to do is go online right now. You can look under Google and or Yahoo and look up all the people that's confessing that they know we are the chosen people of Yahweh. And you think about it. The tabernacle of Edom? And you mean to tell me that a lot of our Hebrew beloved brothers and sisters whom I love dearly, they would go around teaching the words from Edom 
the teachings of Edom when Yahweh said in Obadiah that he would take all the knowledge and understanding out of the mount of Esau? So in other words, they're not even teaching what's right because they don't have no understanding. And we would listen to people like this? That's how low we have become. That's how sad it is that we have abandoned the mighty Yahweh. But let me show you this right quick in the book that you got to see in Ecclesiastics. Let's go to Ecclesiastics, the 12th chapter, and and see what thus said Yahweh in his word. In Ecclesiastes 12, let's read the 13th verse. It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Elohim and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Praise Yahweh. There it is. So in other words, hear the conclusion of the whole matter, y'all. Fear Elohim and keep his commandments. That's why it says in Deuteronomy 6, verse 2, he tells you in verse 1 and 2 of Deuteronomy 6, he said, now these are the commandments, the statutes and the judgments which Yahweh your Elohim commanded to teach you that you might do them in the land where you go to possess it, that thou mightest fear Yahweh thy Elohim to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's sons all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. And you will wonder why we die early? You will wonder, my people, why we die early? Why we don't live out our whole time? It's just like what y'all said in Psalms 81. What did he say? Look what he said again. We, we already read this. But Yahweh told us, he said, the haters of Yahweh should have subdued themselves unto him, but their time should have endured forever. Hallelujah. He's giving you a hint. If you want to live forever, my people, and I mean literally forever, because there's a preponderance of scriptures that lets you know that the righteous will inherit the earth forever. And that means they're not going to die anymore. There won't be death anymore. Now, I, I can prove my point. I can prove that there will never be death in one time in the future, in the latter days, in the future, death will be no more. Let's go to Isaiah, the 25th chapter, and let me show you what I mean. In the 6th through the 8th verse, for those of you all who don't believe Daniel 12, where Yahweh clearly said that some people will be raised to everlasting life or everlasting shame and contempt, one or the other. It's no gray area. It's no middleman. You either going to live forever if you do right or you're going to burn eternally and be shamed and that people will be able to look at you and see your carcass, the worms won't eat it, or must I say the worms won't consume your body, and the fire won't consume it neither. But the truth is, you will be someone that somebody can see who didn't keep his commandments. So when we witness and speak against the laws today and don't want to keep them, then we're witnessing against our own life. 
we're witnessing against our own soul. And the reason why you can't feel it is because in the future, you think that these days are not going to come. But you can rest assured, like y'all said in Numbers 23, verse 19, the scriptures say, Elohim is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. He said, if he said it, shall he not do it? If he spoke it, shall he not make it good? He's going to make it good, my people. Everything that Yahweh said he's going to do, he's going to make it good. So we better make it good of what we saying we're going to do. And in Isaiah 25, let me fulfill what I said. In the sixth verse, this is what it says. Because a lot of people don't know this. A lot of people don't even believe David is going to rise up from the dead. They don't believe that. They believe that a son of David is going to come and rule Israel and the world and be the highest king. And you'll never see that out of the word of Yahweh. Matter of fact, if any teacher or more, or minister or Kohen or rabbi or anyone wishes to show me where the creator said that a son of David would be the leader, would be the commander, would be the prince, would be the shepherd, would be the leader, would be the king of Israel in the last days, other than King David, please call me at area code 323-443-7418. Hit the number one. We're going to put you straight up first on the air. We ain't wasting no time with you so you could set me straight that you could show from the mouth of Yahweh where he said this. Because guess what? In Deuteronomy 8, verse 3, what did he tell us? He said, man does not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahweh does man live. So I can understand why when you read in Isaiah 43, verse 11, that Yah said, I, even I am Yahweh, and beside me there is no Savior. Well, I can understand why you read in the New Testament that Marcion and the Paiso family wrote, where they speak great words against the Most High and said Christ is the Savior. I can understand in Psalms 19, verse 7, where Yahweh said the law of Yah is perfect. Well, I can understand when Paul said in Hebrews 7 and 19, the law made nothing perfect. Well, we understand that. But show me where Yahweh said this. Show me where Yahweh said the law made nothing perfect. Show me where Yahweh said that don't be concerned about feast days and holy days. Show me where the Creator said, don't let no one accuse you of Sabbath and new moon. These things are going to be a witness against us. Yahweh told us in Isaiah, the first chapter, he said, get away from me with your vain oblations, your new moons and Sabbaths. He said, they, they make me sick. And the reason why is because we're not keeping them in sincerity. And we're not obeying the laws of Yahweh for him to be acceptable to us. But the righteous, he lets us know. The righteous, in Ezekiel 20, their offerings and sacrifices is going to be accepted again. In all of our feast days, we'll be keeping again. And even the heathen will be keeping some of ours. Because if they don't come, and I have to show you that in just a minute, of one of the greatest feast days that the nations better come to, or it's going to be some sad repercussions. And we're about to open the phone lines up after we read Isaiah 25. In just a few minutes, all you got to do is call area code 323-443-7418. Hit the number one. We're going to put your question or your comment on the air. And here's what he says in Isaiah 25, verse 6. He said, in this mountain, 
And in this mountain shall Yahweh of hosts make unto thee all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines on the leaves, of fat things full of marrow, of wines on the leaves well refined. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death in victory and Yahweh Elohim will wipe away tears from off all faces and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth for Yahweh has spoken it. Hallelujah. Praise the mighty Yahweh. My goodness, y'all. What is he saying? And what makes it so good about it? This is consistent in the book. This is totally consistent. For instance, go to Hosea, the 13th chapter. And as I said, we're about to open the lines up. All you got to do is call area code 323-443-7418. Hit the number one. We're going to put your question or your comment on the air because we want to hear from you. Hosea 3, 13, excuse me. Hosea, the 13th chapter. We're going to read the 14th verse. And let's see what thus said Yahweh because this is deep. It says, I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O oh, death, I will be thy plague. O oh, grave, I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hid from my eyes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the mighty Yahweh. Yahweh is letting you know, y'all, there's going to come a day where he said in the 8th verse of Isaiah 25, he will swallow up death in victory. He said for he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people. And the veil that is spread over all nations, because this is something that everyone is said by Yahweh to meet in our faith. He said, and Yahweh will wipe away tears from off all faces. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth. For Yahweh has spoken it. And y'all know how the Most High Word works. Let's go to Isaiah 55 and see what he said. Isaiah 55, when it comes to his word, the mighty Yahweh, let's see how Yahweh's word is as we get ready to open the lines up. This is what he told us. He said, for as the rain, in verse 10, cometh down and the snow from heaven and return it not thither, but water it the earth, and make it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Hallelujah. Praise the mighty Yahweh. And we're going right to the phone lines right now. Area code 323-443-7418. Hit the number one. We're going to put your question or your comment on the air as we go straight to area code 770. Shalom, shalom. You on air? Shalom, shalom, Moray. Hey, shalom, Praise shalom. Ima, uh, Tahila, how you doing? I'm doing better. I'm doing better. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I just want to say thank you for this lesson. 
uh, a lot of questions that I had in my heart. You answered them. And I praise the mighty Yahweh for your your tr- way of presenting the truth where even a kindergartner would understand. Hallelujah, sister. Praise Yahweh. I give him all the praise. And I'm yes, so glad to hear that you're feeling better, a little bit better. Yeah, I'm feeling better. Uh, uh, I'm just kind of under the weather, but I feel much better than I did yesterday. And remember to keep my family in prayer. We had death in the family this past week. Hey, yes, ma'am, and we've been praying for you, sister. I want you to know, me and my wife, we, as you had asked us, because we love you, sister, and we miss you and can't wait to see you again in class, too, when you get better, okay, get the feeling better. I'm looking better. forward to being there. Yes, so ma'am. Long. Praise the mighty Yahweh. Well, praise Yahweh. I'm glad you gave us a call, and may the Holy One of Israel bless and keep you, my sister. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the mighty Yahweh. Y'all, before we go to another call, I've got to show you something real quick. I've got to show you one of the great attributes of the Most High, because he got so many. And if you know one, if you know one of his great attributes of the Most High, before I call it out, then you can call and say it yourself. You just call area code 323-443-7418. Hit the number one. We're going to put your question or comment or answer on the air. What are some of the great attributes of the mighty Yahweh that makes him different than anyone and anything? Well, must I say, look what the Creator said in Deuteronomy 32. And now, as I mentioned, and we're going to open the lines up after I get to reading this. We're going straight back to the lines. We want you to show a scripture of one of the greatest things that you know that sets Yahweh apart from anybody. That means no one else can compare to this, can do it. And believe you me, my people. It's so many in this book, so many. But first, let me show you this one. Let's go to Deuteronomy 32, because I love this verse. In Deuteronomy 32, something that no one else can ever do but Yahweh is right here. He told us, and especially for us, that our people that serve other gods, he said for Yahweh in the 36th verse of Deuteronomy 32, for Yahweh shall judge his people. And repent himself for his servants. When he see it, that their power is gone and that there's none shut up or left. And he shall say, where is their Elohims, their gods, their rock in whom they trusted, which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offering. That, and of course, that translates into the so-called Holy Communion, whereas our people have been taught that the bread represents his body, the sacrifice, and they drink the Kool-Aid or the wine as his blood drink offering. Yahweh knows this. He said, let them rise up and help you and be your protection. He said, see now that I, even I, am he, and there is no Elohim with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. Hallelujah. No one can say that but the mighty Yahweh. And we're going right to the next caller. If you got one, as I mentioned now, if you know a scripture that sets Yahweh apart from all others, you present it. Call 323-443-7418. When you hit the number one, we're going to put your comment, question, or your answer on the air. But in the meantime, we're going again to area code 770 Shalom, shalom, you're on the air. Shalom, shalom. 
Shalom, shalom. That sounds like <laughs> Elder Hadia. It is, it is, and it feels so good to be back in the ATL. <laughs> Woo. Hallelujah. I know you've been <laughs> took your little trip go, and everything. I'm back. glad that you came back, sister. We missed you yesterday. Yeah, I missed you all, but I, I you know, got a chance to um, go around and see uh, other brothers and sisters at the uh, classes, and I praise Yah for that. It was good seeing them, you know, um, yes, ma'am. have good reports, and praise the mighty Yah for that. But I wanted to say, um, I think about how um, Yah is a um, a man of war because uh, yes. he, as it says in um, Isaiah uh, Isaiah forty five. Uh, okay. 47, and he named us, and it also lets us know that he formed the light. He he um, makes evil. He makes all these things. So, and he's also a restorer. So, uh, I say he's a man of war, and he's a restorer because once he gets through and do what he do, then he builds it back up how he wants to do. Because Yah's in the heavens doing what Yah wants to do, and I, I praise the mighty Yah for <laughs> all of his attributes. Because he don't do nothing that's not deserving of yeah. whatever retribution's coming. It's because it's deserving of it. And he restores when we learned our lessons, which is why we're doing doing and going through the changes that we're going through today, which you, uh, you know, said um, earlier. And I praise Yah for it because it's a yeah. blessing to be here today because he could have killed us a long time ago. He sure could have, Sister Well. You right, you right on the money, sister. Praise the mighty Yahweh. Praise the praise mighty God Yahweh for, for what his, you... uh, his teachers. I, I praise Yah for uh, the leaders. I praise Yah for Israel, even though you know Israel may be uh, suffering uh, presently with the uh, some disconnections going on. But Yah said He'll straighten up the, the crooked thing. So all we got to do is keep on doing what we're supposed to do, and Yah yes. again is going to take care of Yah's business. And I, I praise Yah for. The dedication that you have in teaching and waking up our Yah's people, and and uh, because the message is going out, and, and I, I praise the mighty Yah because I got it, and so many other people will be getting it, and I bless the mighty Yah, and and bless him for allowing my daughter even to come to class, my youngest daughter, who's Hallelujah. you know quite rebellious. Came to class yesterday, so she's getting it. <laughs> she's getting it. It's coming around. Praise the mighty Yah. Praise the mighty Yahweh, sister. I love you. You know that. Love and may Yahweh all. bless and keep you and your whole family to live forever. Praise the mighty Yahweh. to hear your voice Hallelujah. again. You Praise too. the I'll mighty Yahweh. Uh-huh. Yes, sir. Okay. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Praise the mighty Yahweh. That was wonderful. And we can hear from you, too. We're going to go to our next caller. All you got to do is call area code 323-443-7418. Hit the number one. We're going to put your question, your comment, or whatever scripture you got that can show that Yahweh, that it shows something or an attribute or characteristic that sets Yahweh apart from anyone else. And it's plenty of scriptures. All you got to do is look and meditate on all the greatness of the mighty Yahweh. And in the meantime, we're going straight to Eric Code 513. Shalom, shalom. You are on the air. Shalom, shalom, Moray. Shalom, shalom, my sister. How you doing? I'm good. This is Sister Kim from the House of Yehuda in Cincinnati. Yes, ma'am. You doing wonderful and praise the mighty God. You sound great. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. You do, too. And your words are very great, too. All coming from the mighty Yahweh. And uh, we praise Yahweh. And still having this radio program to let our people know and wake our people up to this great and, and powerful message, you know, of our, our creator. And, Hallelujah. Uh, I, yes, sir. I had a scripture here that, that shows us who our redeemer and our husband is. And okay. Isaiah I'm 50, ready for it. Yes, sir. Isaiah 54, 5 through 8. Isaiah 54, verses 5 through 8. All right. Yes, oh, man, this is devastating right here. Yeah, it says, for thy maker is thine husband. Yahweh of hosts is his name. And thy redeemer 
the Holy One of Israel. The Elohim of the whole earth shall he be called. For Yahweh has called thee as a woman forsaken, and grieved in spirit, and a wife of youth. When thou was refused, said thy Elohim, for a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, said Yahweh, thy Redeemer. Sister, that right on the money. You absolutely Hallelujah. right. You found you a good one, I see. Praise the mighty Yah. Yes, Hallelujah. ma'am. That's wonderful. Anything else you want to say on this or anything else? No, I just love Israel. You know, I love my my whole new family. It's just a blessing. Yes, ma'am. Praise Yah. I know that's right. Hallelujah. I agree with you. I agree with you. It's just a blessing to even know that we're Israel, and it's a blessing to be a Hebrew Israelite, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I agree with you. I want you to tell, I want you to know, and your family, and to tell everybody that we at the House of Israel of Atlanta give our love to all y'all, and may Yahweh bless and keep you all. Yes, sir, I will, and you as well. Hallelujah. Yes. Love you, sister. Shalom, shalom. Stay strong. Yes, sir. Shalom, shalom. Praise the mighty Yahweh. That was absolutely wonderful. We praise Yahweh. Now, I'm on, before we go to another call, I, I wanted to say one. If you all allow me to go ahead and give another scripture. Now, I was, I was looking for somebody to already to have said this, but guess what? Let's see. There are other scriptures, but I definitely wanted to show this one which is in the book of Isaiah. Well, let me go to the next caller first. I, maybe I'm going to the next caller so that I won't say it because they might be the one going to say it anyway. Well, let's see. It's area code 404. Shalom, shalom, you're on the air. Uh, shalom, shalom. Can you hear me? I can hear you real good now. How you doing? That sounds like my queen, your niece. It's mighty, yeah. Yes, this is. This is uh, queen, your niece. Praise Yanni. the mighty way. Hallelujah. Praise the mighty, Hallelujah. Yeah. To the most high, yeah. By saying hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he is the only one. And yes, uh, I'm going to um, go to uh, Jeremiah, the 10th chapter. Uh-oh. Okay. Let's see what Jeremiah, Jeremiah 10. Let's see. If this is one of the great attributes of the mighty Yahweh, because that's what we're talking about today. All right, let's, yeah. let's check it out. Praise the mighty Yah. Okay, Praise this is Jeremiah. The mighty the Yah. Yes, Jeremiah. The okay. Tenth chapter. The 10th chapter, uh, okay. It says in the 10th verse, but Yahweh is the true Elohim. He yes. is the living Elohim. Yes. And an everlasting king. Yes. At his last, the earth will tremble, and the nation shall not be able to imbibe, abide his indignation. Thus shall, you say unto them, thus shall you say unto them, the deities that have not made the heavens and the earth, even they shall perish from the earth and under these heavens. Hallelujah. 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 Praise, Praise, Praise the mighty God. Yahweh. Let My you goodness. know he is the only one. There's nobody but Yah. Nobody. Praise the mighty Yah. Praise the mighty Yah. Yah needs that was well said. That was a pretty, Praise all y'all done brought some mighty powerful ones. Every one of you sisters. It's a blessing. I have to admit. Praise the mighty Yahweh. That was great. Praise yes, the mighty Yahweh. And if it was it in it, I wanted to say, in fact, you yes, mentioned yes. our sisters. I wanted to say to our sisters to keep on, let's pray. Because right now we're praying every first day at 12 o'clock for our nation, for our leaders, for our people, for each other. This time yes. for Israel to cry out. And this is yes. the time that we are calling all of our sisters 
all of our sisters, wherever you are, you know, I'm asking all of you at 12 o'clock every first day, get on your knees. Stop doing what you're doing. Get on your knees and pray to the mighty God. And I pray that he will hear us all and, and hear our supplication all at the same time, no matter where we are. Praise the mighty Hallelujah. God. Praise the mighty God. That's very consistent with his word when he said, all for the well and women. And that is the truth. That's consistent with the spirit of the Most High that we all are supposed to be calling on the Almighty and even our sisters as well and definitely the men because we're the leaders. So I love you, sister, my wife. I love you too, Praise the mighty Yahweh for what you just said. Yes, yes, hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. May God bless you and keep you and may Yah continue to have his word spoken faithfully. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I appreciate that. And may Yahweh bless and keep you. And may we live together in the eyes of Yahweh and his laws forever, us and our people. I love you. Praise Yahweh. 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 Praise the mighty Yahweh. Well, I better hear up and and get me another one in before somebody beat me to the one that I would have thought everybody would have wanted to get to first. But since I see no... Nobody may not be able to get to it. I believe I better go ahead and say it. But before I say it, I guess I had to go to another caller. I'll give somebody else another chance. Are we going to go straight to area code 678? All you got to do is call area code 323-443-7418. Hit the number one. We want to know a scripture that sets Yahweh apart, the mighty Yahweh, that no one else can compare to. We've already got some. We're waiting on others. Area code 678. Shalom, shalom. You are on the air. Shalom. Lori Elkanah. Shalom, shalom, my sister. Hi, this is Sister Nora. May all praise and glory be to the Most High. Hallelujah, Sister Nora. Praise the mighty Hi. Yahweh. Hope Good to hear your voice. Well, oh, same here, same here. Um, uh, praise Yahweh for blessing you and, and helping you to, to gain knowledge and wisdom and to be able to continue to share that with us. And I, I appreciate that, and I thank Yah for that. Praise Yah. Sister. And um, I just wanted to bring up one, one scripture, um, and it's a, a nice, straight one, simple to the point. Uh, when I think about, you know, all that is happening to our people today and, um, you know, want to be um, – grateful and hopeful that, you know, that we will be relieved and, and Yah will help to redeem us and to, yeah. you know, relieve us of this agony that our people are currently going through, which is deserving um, nonetheless. Uh, but I just wanted to mention Isaiah forty five twenty five. Okay. Um, and just hold on uh, to Isaiah hold. 45, verse 25? Absolutely. Okay. All yes. righty, righty. Uh, it's a devastating one. You ain't you you telling the yes. truth, sister. Yes. All so right, let me read you. that. Isaiah forty five, verse twenty five. It says, In Yahweh shall all the seed of Israel be justified and shall glory, which means brag on. Hallelujah. Sister, I know that's right. Because that's the only one that we gonna be justified by. And that's the mighty Yahweh. And no JC going to justify us, so you write on the money, sister. That was a devastating scripture. Praise Yahweh. Absolutely. <laughs> Praise Yah. You have a blessed week. You have a blessed week, Maury. You do, too. You and your husband, and Yahweh bless and keep you all and your whole family. We love y'all, okay? We love you, too. Thank you. Shalom. Shalom, shalom. And your father and your sister and all the rest of your family that I've met. <laughs> I'll, I'll pass it on. Shalom. Pro, shalom, shalom. Praise the mighty Yahweh. Well, I guess maybe somebody else going to beat me to the scripture I was going to give. We're going to go straight to area code 803. Shalom, shalom. You're on the air. Shalom, shalom. All right. Shalom, shalom, my beloved brother. This sounds like Brother Amram. Yes, it is, Moray. Shalom, shalom. <laughs> shalom, shalom. Yes, I sir. Had, I had. Uh, I wanted to see if you could go over this one, Isaiah 42, verse 8. That's the one I wanted. 
right there. Oh, my goodness. Praise Isaiah 42, verse 8. Let's see what we're going to find in this. Let's see. And I already know it's going to be devastating. Let's see. I, you read that one more time. What's that lad, That verse you said? Verse 8. Isaiah 42. 2, verse 8. Verse eight. This is what it reads. It says, I am Yahweh, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Hallelujah. Brother, <laughs> you found a mighty, mighty powerful one, I have to admit. That praise makes me happy, Yahweh. man. I know that's right. He said, that's my name. A lot of people don't know his name, but Yahweh said that those that know him are going to know his name. And he said, my glory will I not give to another. Brother, I know that's right. Nor my praise to a graven image. Like many of our lost, sad to say, brothers and sisters are doing, just like the heathens don't know his name, just like they're giving his glory to an ox, a sheep or a hip on a stick or a Hebrew on a stick, they don't realize that Yahweh said, I'll never give my glory to another. Brother, that was devastating. Praise the mighty Yahweh. Praise the mighty Yahweh, my Yahweh. Bless and keep you more ready in the house of Israel. Love all y'all. Hallelujah. We love you too and your, and your beloved family, brother. May Yah bless and keep you. Take care, okay? Yes, sir. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Praise the mighty Yahweh. Oh, okay, I guess I wasn't going to get a chance to get this scripture out because we got another caller, area code 404. Shalom, shalom. You on the air? Shalom, shalom. Praise you, Yahweh. Shalom, shalom. I know that voice anyway. That's my beloved brother, <laughs> Yako. How you doing? I'm doing great, brother. How you doing? Um, great, great. Uh, I have like two. Okay, um, you got Ooh, okay. Well, okay, um, all right. Yeah, go ahead and give them to us. Uh, Psalms 121, verse 4. Psalms, hold on. Psalms 121. Oh, man, that's devastating. Verse 4. It's one of my favorites, too. That's what I'm talking about, brother. Let's read that first. It says, Behold. He that keepeth Israel neither slumber nor sleep. Hallelujah. Brother, that Hallelujah. was devastating. What's the next one? Uh, Numbers 23, verse 19. Numbers 23, verse 19. Another devastating scripture. I already know it. It's heavy. <laughs> it's deep. Yahweh said, Elohim is not a man that he should lie. Neither the Son of Man, that he should repent. Has he said, shall he not do it? Or has he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Hallelujah, brother. Hallelujah. I should have known you were going to come with some great scriptures, and you did just that, brother. <laughs> Praise the mighty Yahweh. Anything else you want to say, brother? No, that's it. Okay, well, praise Yahweh, brother. I love you. Stay strong, brother Yaakov. Good call. Shalom, shalom, shalom. I guess maybe I'll be able to bring my scriptures out. All you got to do if you want to beat me to it is call area code 323 443 7418. Hit the number one. We're going to put your question or your comment on the air. We're going to put your scripture, your devastating scripture that you want to give on the attributes of the mighty Yahweh and how. Could we have a session like this without going to Isaiah, the 43rd chapter? Let's go there right now and see what thus said Yahweh in the 10th and 11th verse. It says, Ye are my witnesses, said Yahweh, and my servant whom I've chosen, that you may know and believe me. And understand that I am he. Before me, there was no Elohim form. Neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am Yahweh. And beside me, there is no Savior. 
Hallelujah. Praise the mighty Yahweh. Y'all, must I say, is there any other scriptures that you all know that's just as great as the one that I just read? All you got to do is call every code 323-443-7418. Hit that number one. We're going to put your question or your comment on the air. We won't waste no time because we know that there are so many devastating scriptures in here that they're almost like uncountable. Well, I guess I can show you another one. I got time. Look at Isaiah, the 44th chapter. And let's see what thus said Yahweh. He told us in the 8th verse, Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from that time and have declared it, ye are even my witnesses. That's one of the same things he just said. But check this out. There's something the creator's about to say. That some people, I guess, know more than him. But as my teacher, Maria Alicia, the late great prophet of Yahweh, taught me and the people, there's something, this is one of the only things I've ever heard in Scripture that Yahweh said that he don't know. And here it is. You've got to hear this. He don't even know this now. He said, is there an Elohim beside me? Yea, there is no Elohim. I know not any. Hallelujah. Praise the mighty Yahweh. The Most High is revealing something that some of you all claim that y'all know that he don't even know. Y'all believe Christ is one of the threesomes. Yahweh said, is there an Elohim? Is there someone controlling the powers that be beside me? He said, I don't know any. Now, this is the Most High who made the heaven, the earth, the sea, and everything. In it. This is the Most High who made the universe and knows everything, sees everything, hears everything. And you mean to tell me that you think you know something he don't know? Oh, my goodness. Well, <laughs> Thought somebody would have beat me to these, but I, I got more. I got more. I got something I got to show in the few minutes we got left. And if you can beat me to it, you call area code 323-443-7418 in these few minutes we got left. Hit the number one. If you got another scripture, we're going to quickly put you up. But if you, in the meantime, I've got to show you this one. Go to Psalms, oh, excuse me, go to Proverbs 30. Let's go to Proverbs 30. Proverbs 30, look what Yahweh is saying. One of the greatest questions ever asked in scriptures because evidently many people don't even know this. It says in the fourth verse of Proverbs 30, who has ascended up into heaven or descended? Check this out now. This is heavy. It says, who has gathered the wind in his fist? Who has bound the waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name if thou canst tell? You know, maybe I'll ask the people to answer this question next week. If you know who this is, what is his name and what his son's name, if you can tell, 
we want you next week to give us the answer to this. Write that down. For the next broadcast, y'all living, y'all's willing that we all be living by him because he killed and make alive. Can you answer this question? Do you know the answer to this question? What is his name, the one who ascend and descend? Because everybody can do this. Everybody didn't gather the wind in his fist, only one. Only one bound the waters in a garment. Only one established all the ends of the earth. And the question is, what is his name and what is his son's name if thou canest tell? So in other words, next week, I want you to answer this question next week. But in the meantime, we have another caller, area code 202, Shalom, Shalom. You're on the air. Man, I was ready to try to go ahead and get that ass to hockey. <laughs> shalom, here. shalom, my beloved brother. This sounds like Brother Obaya. Yeah, this is Chief. You know, I'm way up in Philly at the subway station ready to take it on home. Now, you know, I've been listening. I just sit back and say, it's so beautiful, so beautiful, so beautiful to know who he is and what he is. Praise the mighty Yahweh. Yes, brother, we, what we going to do, we... If whatever answers anyone have, and they can just, no matter how many they got, we want to see if everybody has the same answer of his name and his son's name. We want right. that answer next week. But anything okay. else you want to say, beloved brother, you go right ahead, and it's good to hear your voice, my man. Praise God, man. I just sit back and join, you know, and seeing other people talk. It's an ever-learning journey. I'm just so happy that I am. It's right here, you know, I'm just happy that um, I fellowship with my mom this week, you know, and she she's learning slowly but surely, you know, and it's just a blessing. Praise God, man. So, oh, praise Yahweh. Um, and see how, you know, he's giving us peace through the midst of the storm, you know, and passes all understanding that um, wait for the, I'm waiting, I'm just being patient and doing all I can do for y'all and, um, Wait for the new king. Hallelujah. Praise. Hallelujah. I know that's right, brother. Well, I pray to the mighty God that he continue to keep you strong, beloved brother, you and your family. And you don't know how good it is to hear from you, brother. I, I, I praise the mighty Yahweh for you. We enjoy people call and say they enjoy uh, your comments that you make. And uh, I just wanted to let you know that, brother. I praise the mighty Yahweh for you. Praise y'all for the glory of y'all. And, I, man, I do appreciate y'all using you, how you're doing a, a, a horrific job. You know, just you know, just keep on doing what you're doing, brother. Hallelujah, because he's wonderful, and, and he's making us wonderful. And we will be glorious, and we will shine above all nations. Bless Hallelujah, you. brother. Praise Shalom. the mighty Yahweh. So I just want you to know it's good hearing from you, and may the Holy One of Israel continue to bless and keep you, brother. All right, brother. Same with you, brother. Bless you. Shalom. Praise Yahweh. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Hallelujah. Praise the mighty Yahweh. Man, that was great to hear from my beloved brother. And must I say, y'all, must I say, I can't wait to hear all the answers next week of this answer to this question in Proverbs, the 30th chapter, the fourth verse, because many people don't know it. We got to analyze this. And let me say, before we run out of time, I've got to give you this. I have to give you this because it's very, very important that we understand this great verse. And it's mentioned as one of the attributes of Yahweh in Proverbs, the 21st chapter. Proverbs, the 21st chapter, we're going to see something that is great of the mighty Yahweh. And I mean devastatingly great. This is what it says about the word of the true and living Elohim. Proverbs, the 21st chapter, verse 30. It says, There 
is no wisdom, nor understanding, nor counsel against Yahweh. Hallelujah. Did y'all hear that? He said there is no wisdom, nor understanding, nor counsel against Yahweh. So in other words, nothing that you can speak or say or think that somebody else came up with, none of it can stand a candle against Yahweh. His words stand forever. Nothing can be put to him, nor anything taken from him. And he does it that we should fear before him. Praise the mighty Yahweh. And we want to leave you with Isaiah, the 40th chapter, the 8th verse. This is where it reads. The grass withered, the flower faded, but the words of our Elohim shall stand forever. Hallelujah. Must I say, my people, on behalf of the entire house of Israel of Atlanta, because we want you to know we praise Yahweh for all of our beloved brothers and sisters of the house of Israel of Atlanta that makes this broadcast possible, and you of my brothers and sisters across the world that listen in and participate, we want you to know how much we love and appreciate your calls, your questions, your comments, and must I say, if you don't have a congregation in the location in which you're at to hear the words of Yahweh, the pure word, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, we do air our Sabbath Holy Convocation on the World Wide Web on our website at www.houseofyisraelatl.org every Sabbath day between 11 and 11.30 when we get started. We are on the World Wide Web for the Sabbath day. And we praise the mighty Yahweh for all of our people that listen in and that's curious about his truth and want to return back to him and be righteous so that we can go back home to Jerusalem. We love you. So does Yahweh. Shalom, shalom. Praise the mighty Yahweh. We love you. Nation that is lawless. America. We the generation that is lawless. Israel. But the word of Yahweh is flawless. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, let's go. We living in a nation that is lawless. lawless. But the word of Yahweh is flawless. flawless. This is the generation that is lawless. lawless. Every word of Yahweh is flawless. flawless. We dealing with a nation that is lawless. But the word of Yahweh is flawless. This is a generation that is lawless. Uh, every word of Yahweh is lawless. This is a generation that is lawless. So they fall in it, they don't know the causes. This is a generation whose sins are always starless. A generation that wear the garments of harlots. This is a generation that curses the father. A generation where the parents is no honor. Lawlessness is raised in the nation of a farmer. And they don't conceive, but they was never clean from living with your leaf. A generation who eyes are so lofty, but y'all will break them down when they found Satan is false teeth. This is a generation who keep a sharp as a sword, and just keep as a knife to devour the poor. But y'all, wait, it's coming just to settle the score. This world will be without the law, and y'all wait no more. We living in a nation that is loud.
dirty rich and idolatrous. A nation that is compelled and full of lawlessness. This be a foolish nation that holds in their own body. A him and have my people and they turn them into zombies. So to the nation that are the poor and those in need. No sympathy when y'all be paid according to you. Come at me 
with the gas or come at me with the smoke. I say in the name of Yah, guaranteed that's all she wrote. I'm wearing black like Phantom. I come at you in the night when you wake up in the morning. All your first born smite, I got my banner. 